unbelievable genuine antiques you can buy for 30 pounds or under candlesticks a pair just like that 19th century 150 years old positively dripping not just in wax but just quality but the funny thing is I could take you to any antique center just about anywhere in the world and we could find similar candlesticks like this similar sort of period for around 30 pounds thereabouts but we would also find candlesticks that were awful reproductions, very modern, very light and very poor quality for the same money and substantially more. The world is bonkers. So I'm going to show you how you determine that the candlesticks you're looking at are genuine and proper antiques. I'll also tell you some stuff about candlesticks that you never knew. So first of all, these are called beehive design candlesticks. That's because of their shape. I'll show you that in a moment. They're made from solid cast brass and so they're pretty well indestructible. And I know this for sure because I bought a pair of sticks like this a few years ago from some clients who informed me, and I believe them, that the candlesticks that they were selling me were once blown up during the war in London caused by a Luftwaffe bomb. The candlesticks were blown to smithereens and there was nothing wrong with them. So they're bomb proof, genuinely bomb proof. But not just bomb proof, I think you'll agree, they're absolutely beautiful. You can use them as little ornaments, pieces of sculpture and then use them occasionally in the way the world is right now there's electricity cuts all over the place so maybe candlesticks like this might actually be used for their intended purpose and that is to shed light because of course they were made before electricity they were as important pieces to have as an electricity switch in your living room you needed candlesticks because you needed light and we just do not Seriously, I don't think we appreciate our own history as much as we should. And when you handle pieces like this, they're dripping in history. And they not only shed light, and you would often put candles, by the way, next to mirrors, so you double up on the light. And the reason for that was the cost. You put your electricity on at home and it costs you money. Burning candles for light cost you money and candles were not cheap things and so you would often place candles almost invariably always place them against a mirror so you would get double the reflection and, and, and double the light and when you look at that reflection of light don't you think it just creates a lovely atmosphere so they look gorgeous creates a nice atmosphere and get this big lumps of brass candlesticks just like that also create romance. Yes, they do. Believe me, they genuinely do. Nothing more romantic. In fact, I'll tell you what, I was going to say, nothing more romantic than candlelight with no or very little electricity. Bear with me one second. I'm going to hit some lights. I mean, seriously, isn't that gorgeous? Wait, I'll hit some more. Quite possibly not enough light to film by, but you get the idea. This, ladies and gentlemen, is romantic, or rather it would be, if I wasn't here on my own. Bear me one second, I'm just gonna put some lights back on. So you get the idea, 30 pounds worth of candlesticks can really improve the romance in your life. Now, 
How do we know that they are genuine antique and not dreadful reproductions? Because the reproductions are out there. Right, I'm gonna to have to take one, and for health and safety reasons, blow the candle out. So first of all, when you're looking at candlesticks like this, weigh it, weigh it, feel it. Does it feel heavy? Now I know it's difficult to transmit that sense of weight in a film like this, but you will just know if you handle candlesticks, go to an antique center, some of them are very light, some are heavy. It's the heavy ones. They're the original antique pieces because they were made to last forever. And the design is really interesting. Let me talk you through it. One of the wonderful things about the world of antiques is everything has a name. So even the shape of this candlestick, each section has its own name. So first of all, this area here where the candle is inserted is called the sconce. Here is the shoulder. This is referred to as the stem. The base down here, the well, and the base is the base. So each section has its own name. But what's really special about this pair of candlesticks is the shape here, just below the stem. That is in the form of a beehive. Isn't that just delicious beyond comprehension? So these are, as you know, referred to as beehive candlesticks. But by far the most interesting feature on a genuine antique candlestick like this is the underside. Can you just see there? There's a rod sticking out. It makes you wonder what on earth that rod is for. It doesn't do anything. It's absolutely fixed. Or rather, it's fixed now. It wasn't when these things were proper, functioning, daily candlesticks. That's called a push-up. Literally, it's a rod. It would have had a little round piece of brass so it didn't pierce your thumb when you pushed it. A little button, effectively. And the rod would push through the stick which would eject the candlestick. I can't do it now. It would eject it out because the candlestick sits down into the sconce. Now, if you can eject the candlestick, push it up, that means you can burn all of the candle. It needs lots of air to burn, of course. So you push it up to the top, you burn all of the candlestick, and it also helps with the cleaning out of the sconce. Because remember, candles were expensive. And so what's the point in not burning that much of candle? Burn it all. So they're called push-up candlesticks. And you will find 99.9% .9 of candlesticks with the push-up action. Whether they work or not, you'll find evidence of it. They are the antique pieces. The reproduction horrors generally don't have the push-ups. Candles and candlesticks are responsible for the saying, burning the candle at both ends. You, you know what it means. When someone's referred to as burning the candle at both ends, now in modern society, you think of someone who's on the town, partying, out all night long, not sleeping, yeah, living the high life, burning the candle at both ends. Well, the saying comes from the 18th century, the, time, the height of candle use. And it didn't quite mean that then. It meant if you were burning the candle at both ends, which you could on, on a certain piece of a contraption of some sort, you'd get double the light, but it would cost you double the money. So it was something that would describe someone living an extravagant lifestyle, wasting money. That was burning the candle at both ends. And let me give you a really good example of someone in times of old who genuinely burnt the candle at both ends. And that was the Duke of Newcastle, who had a home in London in 1760. Now, think about that time span. 1760, the year George III came to the throne in Britain. And at that time, 
a housemaid working in a house in London on average would earn around £600 per month. In today's terms, it would be about £3 in 1760. Think about that, £600 per month. Well, the Duke of Newcastle, his monthly bill for candle power, the equivalent of your electricity bill, was £5,000 in today's terms. Five grand a month purely on candles. You think you've got problems with your electricity bill? Go back in time. We don't know we're born. Why then are they so cheap? If they're so good, why are they so cheap? Well, there's a pretty simple answer to that, I would think. And that is because they're bomb-proof. The vast majority that were ever made are still in existence. I mean, some have been lost over the years, melted down for war efforts and all of that. But there's just a lot of these things, these gorgeous candlesticks still on the market. They're too cheap. And my recommendation to you is go out and find the genuine ones. Don't buy the reproductions. Get the genuine ones for the very little money and do it before everybody else cottons on to the fact that these things are too cheap. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm David Harper. Till next time, good night.